Here is the road ahead for the Canadian men's national team. I love that unconfirmed. <laughs> Seems like the, the worst kept secret out there. Canada, France, June 9th in Bordeaux. Coming right after uh, an international friendly against the Netherlands. All in preparation. That's the date you circle. June 20th, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Kicking off Copa America against the world champions. Argentina, Lionel Messi v Canada. We cannot wait for it. The first of three group stage games in this expanded Copa America competition. And here on the show, we're turning our focus to the Canadian men's national team in a segment that we're calling, it's a working title, O oh Canada, <laughs> O oh Baby, presented by CIBC. And Kristen Jack, her very own, reported yesterday that Tommy Wielden Jr. and Bobby Smirniotis, two Canadian Premier League managers, are in the mix, or the potential mix, to be the next head coach of the Canadian men's national team, there's been a bunch of candidates who have been linked to the job. Here are some of them right there. Some we know are in the mix. Some, like Frank Lampard, seemed a little bit wild and unsubstantiated, quite frankly. Um, I'll let you guys com comment more on that. But based upon where we stand right now, KJ, in what direction should Canada soccer be going with this managerial search? Yeah, well, I mean, from what, from what I'm hearing, it's a, a very wide search for casting an international net, which I think is great and in order to capture the next, the, the next head coach. You know, I think we have to understand that um, here in Canada, there's a lot of negativity around the game, unfortunately, at the moment. Hopefully, we've passed that most of the time. But this is absolutely a job that many people would want. And why wouldn't you? You know, an opportunity to work with a bunch of rising international superstars and just two years out from being a host of the World Cup. Yeah. You know, what an opportunity. By the way, Canada would just be the 19th team to, 19th country to ever get to host a men's World Cup, um, under the FIFA special tournament that it is. So, you know, so what, what do they want to do? So obviously they've, they've, they've started the, the search, as I alluded to yesterday in our broadcast. Um, they have mentioned Bobby Smiliotis and Tommy Wilden Jr. as both, uh, you know, potential people that they want to talk to. Um, I think that's it for now. I don't want to go on and say that they're going to get the job. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to say and to add that, you know, there are a number of international candidates that have expressed interest. One, which is not Frank Lampard, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so we can just quash that rumor right away that that is not happening uh, for lots of different reasons. But yeah, look, there's a, there's a big search on here, Jordan, and they've got to get it right. They do. And I, I think for me, just being a fan of the game and, and wanting Canada to do well internationally, they need someone to come into that locker room that just has the respect, that can take the, yeah. the, their game to a different level. You're looking at the Kyle Aarons, Jonathan David, the Alfonso Davies, all these guys. Taser, we can go down the list of the, the studs that Canada has. But I think now it's time to elevate. No one expected such a rapid rise with this team. Like We always knew that Canada had talent, but now they're just like big-name players worldwide. And it kind of happened quickly. For some people that are just catching on, it seems like overnight. But I think now, too, it's the, the caliber of coach that needs to come with that. Um, to, to coach this team and to really stress these guys. It shouldn't be a vacation when they're coming in or it shouldn't be a, a step down or, or players. They should be challenged, right? And I think whoever's coming in, and that's why the names like Thierry Henry or whoever it might be that have had such an illustrious career, they're so enticing because you know what you're going to get if those type of uh, coaches come in. Whoever it is, I just hope that they're bought in and they can really just take the same. And, the and there'll level. be different sentiments depending who you ask about what type of manager who would make for the best new head coach of the Canadian men's national team. Timing is, is a funny thing here. We've waited since last fall, since John Herman stepped away from this job. Mauro Biello has been the interim and has had the interim tag on him. All the meanwhile, a new general secretary with limited experience in the game, Kevin Blue, was hired. There's so many questions about who's actually going to be part of the decision-making process. What's clear to me right now, KJ, is all the roads are suggesting that Biela will be in charge of this group come Copa America. Yeah, possibly. Uh, I think they need to make a decision by then, though, whether that is Biela full-time or not. I, I, th I still think that there's time. I really do. Uh, and I'm happy to hear and report that they are in that process. You know, I'm hearing, guys, that, you know, Kevin Blue is getting involved you know, what he would describe as being people that he trusts within the game. Uh, some former players have been involved in these, form in, in these discussions uh, with Kevin Blue and some candidates. It hasn't got to the point yet where they've had informal uh, interviews in person. 
but that this is happening. This is happening. This is not some internal discussions. It might or might, they, are, they are understanding the priority of this going forward. Uh, and those discussions are happening. You know, they're talking to certain people to, to figure out who they're going to speak to in, in person, as I said. I'm not involved in those processes, but I'm aware of them. I would say this, you know, when you break down what is needed from these coaches, and Jordan just made a great point with the presence in that dressing room, for me it starts with right at the very top, I would be figuring out what this coach is, is like when it comes to emotional intelligence. Maybe I'm a bit you know, tainted. That's what I need. It, for me, it's emotional intelligence straight away. Yeah. And the ability that comes from it to do everything that you need from that. Self-awareness, empathy, motivation. And with emotional intelligence and a record in the game with mm -hmm. a presence yeah. that you can walk into that dressing room. The other thing, too, is that this is from my own observations. I think some people within that squad should have a bigger voice mm. and don't. And I think some people in that squad have a bigger voice and shouldn't. Yes. And for me, it's time to have the true voice to come in who everybody looks up to and respects. And when you've got people like Alfonso Davies working for the caliber of manager that he's had, and now you think about what Jonathan David is doing, and you think about what Kyle Lahren and where he's managed, Alistair Johnson with Postacoglu and Brendan Rodgers, they work day in, day out with top-class managers. Yeah. And so it's going to be difficult search to find somebody that gone, well, garners that respect, but I think that's very important. That, that, that's why what's interesting for me, I'm not picking on the new general secretary, but he doesn't come from a football background. So who are these people that he trusts that are providing him guidance in making this critically important Well, I think he knows, decision. right? He knows he's got to trust other people. It's not always what you know. Right. It's understanding what you don't know. That's also been an issue with the board, and that's why I wonder how or if a presidential election may affect this search as well. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of next month, there will be a new president named. It will be um, the current president who is running once again in Charmaine Crooks, and we're reliably told, and unless something changes between now and then, uh, she will be running in opposition to Peter Agrusso, the, uh, the, the president uh, and, and chair of Ontario Soccer, who's going to be running for that position as well. Could potentially a new president change the way that this search may play out, KJ? Well, it doesn't sound like it. I think obviously we'd be naive to say that that person wouldn't be involved potentially in the final decision making. But there's a reason why a process is happening now. They understand the timeline that they're in, the consideration for Mauro Biola, consideration for international candidates. And to just wait to that moment to then restart the engine and get going again, I think would be an enormous mistake. They've recognized that. Uh, and as we said, look, we just showed the massive games that are coming up for this federation. They've got to get it right. And, and I, you know, whether it be Kevin Blue, whether it be somebody else, I think it screams for me that they need leadership in a technical football area. They don't have that leader of football right now that I think they would like. I personally think that this federation needs that is not just the head coach of the national team who runs that organization that has somebody with a football quality to look into. Maybe they'll get that eventually. But, they, but ultimately, to answer your question, um, no, I don't believe that they will wait for that. Interesting. Plenty of big decisions to be made. The manager of Canada, the pr president of Canada Soccer, registration fees, Project 8, all of this on the table in the coming weeks as we build forward towards the AAM, which will be uh, taking place the first weekend in the month of May. Uh, look, One Soccer Today, we'll dig into all of this. We continue to report, do our best to keep you informed on the latest and greatest in Canadian soccer. It's One Soccer Today, Monday and Thursdays, right here on One it's Soccer. Oh, no. <laughs> this is match night. That is today. We have a lot of times and dates and soccer and matches all included in all these show titles.